Barbara. Today's name is the name of an artist that I'm an absolute fan of. And I know that many people are actually fan of that artist. And that video has actually been asked by subscribers. So, Silva, that video is for you, but also for everyone else, obviously. Um, but the name of that artist, but when I was living in France, I've heard very often that people thought that this artist was from the French West Indies, but this artist is actually the pride of a Central African country, which is Gabon. And for those who don't know where Gabon is, this country of Africa is in the middle of Africa. It's in the central region of Africa, next to Cameroon, Central African Republic, as well as Congo. And the artist we're going to talk about today is someone who didn't plan on becoming the huge, incredible artist that he became. So we're going to dive into his story to understand how this artist actually became the incredible artist that he is and how his music is still extremely popular nowadays. His name is Ali Van Guma. Off we go. Olivier Ngoma, which is his actual real name, was born on the 23rd of March 1959 in Mayumba, which is in the southwest of Gabon. From a very young age, Olivier Ngoma will be surrounded by music because his dad was playing a very specific instrument, which is harmonium, and he's going to teach him, when he's going to be eight years old, how to play this instrument. And we're going to see that progressively, he's going to touch different types of instruments, and before becoming the artist that he's going to be, he's going to stop playing different instruments. But at the very beginning, all started because his dad initiated him to this specific instrument, which is harmonium. And four years after he started playing that specific instrument, his family and himself are going to move from Mayumba to move to the capital city, which is Libreville. So obviously, when he's going to move to Libreville, he's only going to be 12 years old. So he's going to keep doing his studies. And what he's going to be studying is called accounting. But he wasn't a real fan of it. So at the same time, he's going to become the guitar player of his high school band, which was called Capo Sound. So to become as comfortable as possible while playing live, what he's going to be doing is that he's going to be doing lots of concert and live performance for little gigs in the region, which is going to really help him to be much more comfortable. I've experienced that myself, but I know that playing and singing live, you always have to put your shy and timid attitude on the side if you really want to um, be comfortable with the public, which he actually managed to do brilliantly. But as I was explaining earlier, Olivier Angoma wasn't a real fan of his accounting studies, so what he's going to start doing is that he's going to start collecting instruments in his house and create his home studio when he's going to be playing his own music. And at the same time, Olivier Angoma will also have another passion, which is through TV. And for those who don't know, Olivier Angoma had an impressive music career, but he also had an impressive career in the TV industry. And when he's going to be 20 years old, he's going to start working for one of the main TV in Gabon, and he's going to be a cameraman. And he became the chief exec of the TV, who was the camera for 20 years beforehand. So from 1980 to 1988, Olivier Angoma will do lots of different demos, but he's not going to have a huge success and what's going to happen is that in the winter of 1988, he's going to go to Paris and he's going to meet someone who will actually change his whole life, including his music career, which is leading us to the next part. And what's going to happen is that he's going to meet a musician and producer, which is someone 
absolutely exceptional, who really influenced the career of lots of African artists, including Ndilia Bell, as well as the queen of Afro-Zouk, Monique Seca. <laughs> So when Manu Lima will meet Oliver Ngoma, what's going to happen is that he's going to be doing the artistic directing of a song which is now an absolute tube. It is Bane. And two years later, in 1990, the song and the album Bane will be officially released. And you might think that it's going to be an absolute success straight away. Well, absolutely not. So you might wonder how that song became an absolute tube all over the world. But we're going to see that right now. to remember is that at the time it was still the 90s and we didn't have social media we didn't have youtube to release a song and have an absolute buzz around it so what's going to happen is that the success of bunny will be made thanks to the radio and the song will be heard and heard and heard again in the french radio rfi and the French radio that I used to listen when I was a kid with my dad, Africa numéro 1, and that's thanks to this radio that the song will be an absolute success both in Africa, in France, and in the French West Indies. But the very first album of Olivier Angoma will not just have one great success, so I'm going to put a couple of extracts so that we dive into the great success of the very first album of Olivier Angoma. <laughs> of African music just like song like Mario Mamou of Franco which are the traditional rumba music style Pour la première fois, on a vu le, le, le grand stade au président Marbongo plein. Les gens étaient debout. C'est vrai. Euh, ça m'a fait une très grande impression. J'étais moi-même étonné de les voir. Enfin, je pensais qu'il y avait une manifestation à côté du stade. Oui. Et quand j'ai vu que depuis non Bakele, les gens étaient en file indienne pour mm -hmm. le stade et que pendant tout le concert, d'autres étaient dehors, oui. ça c'était quand même impressionnant. Obviously, with the great success of his very first album, Bane, his fans were really looking forward to see the second album coming out. And he explains that he was ready to release the second album six months after the first one, but his team told him to leave the first album, go throughout the world, and then release the second album. And what's going to happen is that the success of Bane keep going up and up and up. So even if he was ready, he decided to wait a little bit longer before releasing the second album 
five years after, and when he actually released the album, the success of Bali was still absolutely exceptional. And he's explained this right here. Seven months after, the album has started to decolle. So, it has decolle for one year, two years, three years, four years. The fifth year, I thought, well, that's too much. Even if it continues to continue, we have to release a new album. So, that's how I released Adia in 1995. Et Adia aussi a subi le même ressort que Bané. Cinq ans après, ça se vendait encore. Et il y a des pays jusqu'à ce jour qui ne connaissent que deux albums. Donc les deux premiers. Donc il faut laisser l'album le temps de, de faire le tour du monde. So he's going to release Adia in 1995, which is the year when I was born. And this album, the previous one and the following ones, were all going to be singing in Lumbu, which is his mother tongue. but he was also someone singing in Lumbu as I was mentioning earlier which is his mother tongue and I've been asked several times to translate the lyrics of this song I've done on my YouTube channel but I do not speak that language so if anyone knows how to speak and translate Lumbu please do it on the comment because we're all going to be so grateful for this the song, which is also the name of his latest album, Saga, which is pronounced Sara in Lumbu, means enjoy, and he explains the meaning of that song right here. Ton dernier album est baptisé Saga. Dans ma langue maternelle, c'est Sara. Sara. Bon, en français, on dit Saga. Sinon, c'est Sara. Et qu'est-ce que ça veut dire, Nori? Amuse-toi. Il y a des gens qui passent le temps à porter le poids de leurs soucis, des problèmes de tout genre. Alors qu'à côté de ça, la vie leur offre quelque chose de meilleur. Mmh. Au lieu de s'occuper de ça, ils s'occupent des soucis. Or les soucis, ça ne, ça ne passera jamais. Alors, Noli, Mais le bonheur peut, te passer, peut passer comme ça. The song Sagu, which means to have pity for someone, to feel very sorry for someone, means um, that some people, men and women, they only chasing for um, materialis materialistic things, um, financial financial wealth, but they never crave for creating that emotional bond that you can have with your family, with your kids. And he used the idea of a temple and he says, when you have a family full of kids, full of relatives and all of that together in a house, at the end of the day and at the end of your life, basically, that's what's going to fill you up with love. But if you do focus on just getting a lot of money and that type of materialistic things, at the end of your life, your temple will be absolutely empty. And he's explaining this right here. Tu as dit j'ai pitié des femmes, ça s'appelle des hommes aussi, qui font le mauvais choix de... Euh, un mauvais choix dans leur vie, c'est-à-dire préfèrent l'argent au bonheur de, 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 de l'enfantement. Mm -hmm. euh, il vaut mieux avoir une maison pleine d'enfants qu'un que, que qu palais vide. Mm -hmm. Parce qu'on a suivi plus l'argent, les, les, les métiers, les honneurs, les, 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 grands, les grandes fonctions mm -hmm. au détriment de l'argent. Et encore, d'une manière, euh, disons, spirituelle. C'est-à-dire, il y a des gens qui préfèrent sacrifier leur ventre pour avoir des grands biens et à côté d'eux, euh, euh, parallèlement à eux, il y, a des, il y a des maisons où il n'y a pas de grands biens mais qui sont où les gens vivent heureux parce qu'il y a une, une postérité euh, qui fait vivre la maison. family and children can give you and when I was mentioning that he was very shy he explains that it is thanks to his wife and his kids that he's decided to do music out of his home studio because for him initially he was very shy and there was no way he could actually do music out of his studio but thanks to the support he actually done it and he explained this right here. Mais la, la femme est une aide très précieuse. Et j'en veux pour preuve, moi-même, je n'ai jamais, à aucun jour, envisagé de faire une carrière musicale. Moi, je me disais, quand j'ai quitté les orchestres, je me disais, bon, je gratte à la maison et puis je le fais pour moi, mes enfants, mes amis, et puis ça, ça s'arrête là. Mais elle a insisté pendant au moins 
je dirais, dix ans oui. pour que j'aille en studio. C'est elle, ma femme, qui m'a poussé, mes enfants, qui m'ont dit « Papa, il faut y aller yeah. ». Moi, je me disais, même si je fais un disque, c'est pour faire quoi En tout cas, pas des concerts. Yeah. J'étais tellement timide et je ne me voyais pas chanter. En plus, je ne chantais pas. J'étais instrumentiste. Mm -hmm. euh, les seules fois que j'ai chanté, c'est dans ma maison. Mm -hmm. Et comment aller affronter un public euh, avec ces qualités de chanteur que je n'avais pas mm -hmm. Donc, euh, c'est leur, euh, c est, c est, c est leur... Ce sont les encouragements de ces derniers qui ont fait que je... Je me jette à l'eau, comme on dit. But his third album called Seva. Was slightly different from his second and his first album because the album was basically replying to um, the English speaking public because they were very con liking the very specific type of music um, from the French West Indies but with lots of live music with the guitar and with the drum as well which he's going to be doing for the album but for his latest album that we've talked about before Saga Sarah <laughs> which is Afrozook. So in 2006 for his latest album, he's going to work again with the musician and producer Manu Lima and unfortunately it's going to be his very last album. <laughs> only three years after releasing his very last album he's gonna pass away from a kidney failure it's been almost 13 years now since Oliver Ngoma passed away but he's still leaving through his music because we're still millions and millions of fans listening to his music Oliver Ngoma's son sings with lots of elegance he's that song I'm gonna leave the link to his YouTube channel if you want to have a look at the great covers that he's doing. actually share his talent for music because we're so millions of fans of Oliver Ngoma and I'm pleased to have shared his story with you. If you have any artist that you would like me to share this story of, please let me know in the comment and I'll be pleased to do it. We'll see you all next week. Thank you. Oliver!